Good afternoon, everyone. How the fuck are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty goddamn good. I want to do a hopefully quick video reply to Jesus Freak today, and I will link the video that I'm replying to in the Sarah Han bar as usual. Now, it's a short video, so you, you can take some time to fucking watch it, but the basic plot is that Facebook and other social networking sites online have become a a contributor to divorce uh, worldwide, right? Um, Facebook is basically Temptation Island, right? If you're married, you can always get online and flirt over the internet, maybe get in touch with a few ex-girlfriends and start chatting it up with them again. Um, so people are pointing the finger at Facebook, right? And the solution is, according to Jesus Freak, well, maybe you can get a joint Facebook with your wife um, share your passwords, you, you're not supposed to keep secrets from one another, and things like that. Um, before I get into why that's not really ever going to help matters, I, I, I want to kind of explain why I, I take issue with that Facebook calls me to do this kind of attitude, and that's really what it is. I mean, there is really nothing more fucking American than pointing at an organization of any kind, mostly business organizations that have a large amount of influence, there's, there's nothing more American than, than pointing the finger at them and blaming them for something that you did, right? It's a very American thing to do. It's become quite the American tradition, right? I'm fat because McDonald's sells cheeseburgers. Um, big tobacco companies gave me cancer. Um, Facebook ruined my marriage. You see the language there? It's a very dangerous way to communicate. That's a very stupid thing to say. Facebook didn't ruin your marriage, right? Facebook didn't sleep with your wife. McDonald's did not force feed you cheeseburgers. And Big Tobacco did not inject you with cancer. That's not what happened. See, what happened is, is you were irresponsible. You ate the cheeseburger. You were irresponsible. You smoked the cigarettes. Um, you didn't give a shit enough about your spouse to not flirt with someone else over the internet. It's your fucking fault. And, and it's really annoying to me, um, this, this attitude that everybody else is responsible for my fuck up. I mean, I mean it's, it's amazing. Like, it, for example, if any of you have ever seen that, uh, that shitty pseudo documentary called Super Size Me, where the guy eats McDonald's every day. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. Um, I watched it for the first time about a month ago, and I was, I, I was amazed to hear the narrator's opening question. And it was, quote, When does personal responsibility end? Unquote. When does personal responsibility end? That was actually considered a legitimate question by many people. As if there's some point where McDonald's should be responsible for what we do. Right? The, the, the correct answer to that question is never. Personal responsibility never ends. Okay? Ever. Whatever happens to you, all right, if it has something to do with a choice that you've made for yourself, it's your fault. It's no one else's fault. And this language, this, the, the way people talk about uh, rock and roll music and rap music being this horrible influence on, on, ir on irresponsible people, it, it's very annoying. You're either an irresponsible fuck-up, and it doesn't matter what music you listen to, what books you read, where you eat, what you smoke. These are the choices that you make. Okay, And if you make some sort of negative choice, it has nothing more to do with anything but the fact that you made an irresponsible decision, and you're an asshat. That, that's what happened. You know, there's no need to point the finger at all of these other entities and organizations that, or corporations and say, they did this to me. It's a load of fucking bullshit. And it's a really dangerous way to think because it leads us to hearing questions like, when does personal responsibility end? And people hear that question and they go, well, that's a good question. Because of the, the, the way that we communicate. We communicate as if um, we're not responsible for our own actions, especially in America. Like I said, it's a very American attitude, I have to say. 
Okay, now the other thing I'm taking issue with here, um, let me start by quoting one of my many heroes, Mr. Larry Flint, who said, quote, there's nothing more certain to destroy a beautiful relationship than marriage, unquote. And that is a very cynical statement. But I think we have to start looking at marriage in a very realistic way. And I think if we look at the divorce statistics, um, we can safely say there is a problem with marriage, period, right? We can look at the statistics and say most marriages don't work. That's a safe thing to say. And once we've acknowledged that, Jesus Freak, I think it's wise to maybe start considering why most marriages don't work. And I don't think it has anything to do with anything outside of the relationship itself. The relationship that eventually becomes broken didn't become broken because of some sort of outside influence like Facebook, uh, a strip club, or penthouse, or Playboy, or any of the other things that are, you know, Things that people like to point at and go, this is why my marriage fell apart. No, your marriage likely fell apart because the woman that you married wasn't the woman you should have married. The person you're with isn't the person you should have been with. That's probably why your marriage fell apart. Okay? If you're online and your wife's asleep and your kids are asleep and you're down in the basement online flirting with someone over the internet, it's not because of Facebook. It's because you don't give a shit enough about your wife to not flirt with other women online, okay? So you, you've already established that you do not respect how she would feel about that, and you don't care about her and genuinely love her enough to not do shit that would hurt her, right? And vice versa, right? Women do this all the fucking time, too. If you don't care about the man you're with and you're doing shit like that and you're meeting people behind his back, having phone conversations with other men, then you don't give a shit enough. You don't genuinely love the person you're with, and you shouldn't have been married to begin with. Now, how do we solve that problem, right? If, if, if it's not Facebook, if it's not uh, penthouse, if it's not internet porn, how, how, how do we get these marriages to work? Um, we marry less. We stop encouraging people, especially in America, to be married for the sake of being married. To be married simply because we were brought up since we were very small children to believe that that is the American dream. That's what we should be shooting for. This perfect family. You find a woman. You find a man. You find a partner. You marry that person. You spend the rest of your life with them. You create a family and you go to work and you die together a happy couple. And you leave a legacy that can repeat the same horrid fucking cycle. The problem is, is that I think it's safe to say that over 90% of the marriages that we have in this country right now, these are people that probably should not be married. How can I say that? Um, you might you might say, well, you know, well, how are you going to, how do I know when the right person comes along? Well, you know when you, gen, when you genuinely, truly, and honestly know for a fact that you want to spend the rest of your life with another person. And that's just half of, of the equation, right? The other half is, that other person has to feel the exact same way about you. Can this happen? Yes, I think it can. But not nearly as often as people are saying that it is. How many weddings, I should have looked this up before I, I did the video, how many weddings occur every day in the United States? You're honestly telling me that that many people feel that bonded. They feel that close to one another that they can honestly say they have that strong of a relationship and a love and a commitment for one another that they want to die together. All right. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. I think monogamy, uh, marriage are beautiful ideas. They're great things if you find the right person. But we live in this fucking world where we're taught that we shouldn't get married because we absolutely love someone. We're brought up to believe that we should get married because it's just the thing to do, and religion is a huge contributing factor here. Religion teaches people that if you have a relationship outside of marriage, that your relationship is sinful, is wrong, is an abomination in the eyes of God, and it's a huge problem. So now you have people that don't actually have that kind of love for one another marrying each other, and you wonder why People or men are downstairs in the basement jerking off the internet porn while their wives are asleep because they really don't respect her or love her enough to be in that committed, lifelong relationship in the first place. So let's, before we start, you know, pointing our finger at Facebook and Hustler Magazine and internet porn and all the other things 
that, that people like to say destroyed their marriages. How about we start by looking how we looking at, pardon me, how we view marriage. Because it's fucked up. You know? If marriage were treated differently, if this idea were approached differently and taught to us differently, maybe people would start entering into these co committed relationships for the right reasons. Maybe people would stop throwing the word love around so recklessly. You know, maybe that's the problem here, Jesus Freak. I think that it is. That pretty much sums it up. You guys have a good day. Peace.